Hello. I assume that all of you have a smartphone, right? Now raise your hand. How many of you think that your smartphone is interacting with AI and algorithms on a daily basis? Please raise your hand. Okay, most of you, excellent. How many of you think that is interacting about 50 times every day? Okay, 100 times? Raise your hands. A thousand times? Okay. Well, predictions say that in one year, we will be interacting with AI 5,000 times. In one year, we'll be interacting with AI 5,000 times every day, every single day. AI is already part of our lives. AI is the tool that brought you here through a map, AI is probably in the tool that helped you make a report at work this morning, or your homework last night, or it's in the system that is going to decide if you get a job in the future, if you get a bank loan, or you get a fiscal inspection by the government. AI is already here, but we will be interacting with it even more, 5,000 times every day, in one year. Imagine that. This means we will be having more use of the technology. It means that this technology is going to be collecting more data from us. And it might also mean that we will be exposed to unfair situations from the technology. You might say, well, Anna, the technology is neutral. How can it be unfair to me? Let's look at a couple of examples. How many of you think that your kids are at school or at the university are being monitored? Please raise your hand. Okay, just a few. It's not in all the schools, it's not in all the universities, but it's happening and it's coming. We are monitoring our kids and our students to make predictions. For example, a very useful one, to see when they might drop off school. So we want to avoid dropouts, so we monitor them. We see how they're doing. Until here, it's fine. We see how kids are doing, then we can talk to the parents, tutors, and find solutions. But what if one of the markers that is tracing our students, it's a little bit off? For example, what if there was a marker that pointed those students who are the first ones in their family to go to university? and say, well, these kids are more likely to drop out than others. Would that be fair? What about if there was another marker that said that kids who have parents of the same sex, two fathers or two mothers, are also to be looked at in a different way? Would that be fair? Let's look at another example. How many of you think that at work you are being monitored? Okay, <laughs> well, there's a study uh, by the Durham University in the UK that says that 27% of European companies are monitoring team members. Monitoring for performance indicators to see how you're doing, how motivated you are. It might mean that, for example, if you work at a call center, they're checking your voice and see if you're stressed or not or they are checking how you communicate through direct messaging. But what if you come from a different culture and you're used to communicating in a different way? What if the system flags you and says, well, this person is not communicating in the normal way. You're not doing anything offensive. You're just communicating something different. What if you get fired because of that? And what if there is no way for you to go and say, hey, why was I fired for that? Why did the system flag me? As citizens, it's very important for us to know first when we are interacting with AI. We need to know. There needs to be transparency in that. Second, we need to know when we are being judged by it. And third, we need to know how to question the system. I must say that what I'm doing here is a little bit tricky for me because I'm a firm believer that this technology is going to bring us great things. But at the same time, I am concerned about possible negative impacts it can have 
towards us as people in our communities and society in general. And that's why I'm here today. AI will bring us for sure great things, and it's already doing so. For example, it's helping us detect breast cancer 20 times faster than before. This means we are avoiding deaths and a lot of suffering. But already it has happened that many people are feeling negative impacts based on unfairness from AI systems. The most classical example comes from way back, way back means four years ago, when a tech company decided to hire new people for a certain position. In the past, that position had always been uh, filled up by men. It was always men working there. So they put all the data of all the successful men that had been working in that position, made an algorithm, and put it to work. The system was automatically rejecting all women because it understood, okay, who can do this job very well? We have a characteristic, men, and was rejecting all the women that were applying for the position. It wasn't until many of these women complained and went to ask to the system, hey, why am I not hired? I, I'm, I'm good for the job, I have the skills, that they opened that box that was the algorithm, and they saw, oops, without us knowing, it is rejecting all women just because it has a bias from the past. Let's correct it. And then they changed it. So it is very important that we always think about questioning this system. It's, it's like a baby. It's growing. It's in a constant iterative process. It's not finished. So it's very important that as a citizens, we question it. Okay. And then we have things like this. The Pope wearing fancy outfit. He even has a little bottle of water, if you notice. Or we have this. An ex-president being violently arrested. They're fake. There are two images that are fake. We've always had this information. Always. But it has never looked this real. Today, it's really easy to make an image like this. It's very easy to find a target group to send it to. Maybe you want that people are motivated about something. Maybe you want them to be scared. Maybe you want them to be super upset. Maybe you want them to do something in particular. So first, you create the image, you choose a target group, and in a matter of seconds, you can arrive to thousands, millions of people with that image. In the past, what we believed is what we, what we saw is what we believed. We, we thought, okay, we've seen a video, now this thing exists. Or we've seen an image, now we know it exists. It's no longer like that. We can no longer trust what we see or what we hear. Today, a person can make a video of your CEO of your company doing something awful. Next thing you know, the stock exchange of your company has dropped and you are on the street. You're fired because of a deep fake. Or somebody could now take my voice and call my mother and ask her for money. And my mother, my own mother, could not be able to tell the difference. You might think that there will be regulations, and regulations are coming regarding this technology, but they are late. We are moving extremely fast, and regulations are not fast enough to catch up with this. So, if we cannot believe what we see, what do we believe in? If we see a video of our favorite elect uh, electoral candidate doing something awful, then do we believe, do we vote for that? But how, where, are you where are we left as voters in this world? As citizens, it is very important that we question this system constantly. We are used to other kinds of industries, like for example, the food industry or pharmaceutical industry. They have a very clear process. They have standards before something arrives to us. This technology is completely new and it's moving really fast. So those standards, unfortunately, are not in place yet. They will come, but they are not in place yet. 
So it is our duty to protect ourselves. And this is the topic of my talk. So I'm going to give you five tips to navigate this ever-changing world. The first one is stay informed. Now you know, for example, you know about deepfakes, you know about schools, you know about universities. I invite you to go to your school and to your at work and ask, are you collecting my data? What are you using it for? And if something happened, how can I answer, uh, reply to it? How can I interact with it so we can see if it is accurate or, or if it has a bias? So always try to stay informed with all the... Um, up, up to date with all the technology. Second, be cautious with your data. Do not give your data to the first <laughs> company that asks for it. Only give it when it's absolutely necessary. And you might say, well, and I don't have anything to hide. Okay, you don't have anything to hide, but it is your duty to preserve your own privacy. Be aware of bias. As uh, I explained in the example of this hiring algorithm, there is bias in the data that we put in the algorithms. There's this example from a country that created a welfare program to protect people in the case of exclusion, so to avoid social exclusion. They took previous data, developed the algorithm, and put it uh, out there. It turned out what it was doing, it was rejecting single mothers. Single mothers were not getting the aid that the program was created for. There is bias in systems, so we need to always ask questions. And you might think, well, I'm not a single mother, I'm not asking for economic help from the government, why do I care? Because you will have 5,000 interactions with AI and algorithms every day. And there will be a point where you will be one of these. Maybe because you're a woman. Maybe because you are a person of color. Maybe because you're gay. Maybe because you're overweight. Maybe because you broke up with your partner less than a year ago. Any of these factors might go against you at some point. And to fight them, what we need to do is ask questions. When you are in a situation that it's not fair to you, ask questions. The single mothers went, they asked questions, the government looked again at this algorithm, realized, whoops, there was some data that was wrong, changed it, and now the program works well. This is a baby, this technology is a baby. We need to help shape it in a way that benefits all of us. And it is our duty to do that, to have these interactions. When, for example, you go to the bank and you get denied a bank loan and you think, well, I should have gotten it. Why not? Go ask why. The teller will not know. But go and they will escalate it. Ask questions. If more people say, hey, why didn't I get it? Maybe they will look at the algorithm and there'll be something wrong. They will find a mistake. The technology is not bad per se. The people developing it, they're not bad. They're just like all of us. But there's bias in the data. So we need to always be asking these questions. And the fifth one is ask for regulation. At the end, this is what is going to save us. But it's so slow that meanwhile, we have to do something. And do not worry about innovation. We are super creative. We can have responsible innovation. Now, how many entrepreneurs or business uh, people are there in the room here? Business owners, entrepreneurs, raise your hands. Excellent. Fantastic. To you, what I have to say is, do you want to be the next tech scandal? The tech scandals are really helping us shape the technology. But do you want to be the next one? Probably not. And second question for you is, you have now the chance to use a technology, whether it's because you are developing it or because you're going to be using AI as a service, you have the chance to make this world a better place. Do you want that you and your business, and of course you're going to be making money, we, we, we know that and that's good, but uh, do you want that you and your business are bringing us closer to a better world or not, or further away. At the end of the day, that's your decision, but we have a great opportunity here. 
To the rest of us, what I say is talk to people. Now you know, for example, about deepfakes. So next time you talk to a friend and they show you a deepfake, you can say, well, you know, this is now fake, <laughs> Do, thanks to technology, and there are other examples. So talk to people. I'm going to leave you with this image. This image is uh, my street in Spain. It might be familiar to some of you. At the end of a hot summer day, people take their chairs out on the street and uh, talk to whoever stops by, whether it's family members, uh, neighbors, or somebody just walking there, and conversations start happening. I love this photo because it shows three generations of my family. Three generations means three ways of interacting with technology three different ways of the knowledge that they have of technology. And it's in spaces like this where we share knowledge, where we create community. So my message for you is talk to people. Talk to your elders and explain to them what this technology is about and how they can be impacted by it. Talk to your teenagers and explain to them things, for example, all the, all the data that is being collected from them and that can be used against them at some point. For example, to sell them, th them things depending on the mood that they have at that moment. They're very exposed. Talk to your co-workers about possible unfair situations. Talk to your friends about how you're using technology. It is only when we understand as a society how we are using this technology and we have the capacity to question it that we can make it ours. I have no doubt that AI is going to bring us great things. It's going to help us live better. It's going to help us be more productive at work, be more connected, but we cannot allow that it becomes this big technology that we cannot question. And right now, it's our duty of all of us to question it and to shape it in a way that is human, in a way that serves us. And it takes all of us to do that. Thank you.